Welcome everyone to the Main Street Business Podcast with Matt Sorensen and Mark Kohler. We're delighted to be with you today sharing what we think is some helpful information, but That's I don't it. know. It'll be up to you to up decide. To, man, I We thought, report. You decide. That, this is going to be an awesome topic today. I am so excited <laughs> I, about today. This I, is going to be helpful, damn it. It's going to rock your world. You people are going to love this. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big topic. Yeah. This is a big topic. And it's something we've seen everybody in our law firm, our clients, you know, our family, ourselves have to come up and answer these questions. Yep. So here's the topic. And do the brainstorming. Yeah. If you didn't see the title on the podcast, you're multitasking. Here's the topic. Businesses I can start for under a thousand, under five thousand dollars or less. What could I do right now to get a side hustle making more money? People all the time, I teach college groups and classes and I, you know, there are workshops we do around the country. We're constantly harping on people, have a side hustle. Teach your kids how to have a side hustle. Teach your brother or sister how to have a side hustle. Teach your mom and dad. And everybody's like, well, what can I do? Oh my gosh, today we're gonna throw down as many as we can in, here's our categories. Do you wanna start, Matt? Tell them our categories. Yeah, products. Okay. Services. Uh, and we got some subcategories there, online businesses, food businesses, because we do that three times a day, <laughs> and pets, because there's more pets out there than kids now. So there's a lot of businesses around pets. Yep. And under the service section, so you know, we're not going to, I mean, we're, we're going to throw out everything under the sun we can, but we're going to try to keep them to categories to keep this organized for you. But music related uh, or industry, home and real estate. Anything dealing with the real estate industry, like even to a handyman level, um, professional services, and maybe in fitness and health. So we're gonna we're gonna throw just and there's so many that we could. And some of you may say, well, why didn't you organize all these beforehand and all these categories? You know what, people? <laughs> the best part of the show. No one was gonna say that. <laughs> Don't criticize. They, they us would. Already. They would. I know them. They're very. You know, our listeners are very demanding. They want the best. Yeah. But yeah. here's, here's the beauty of this show. It's live and uncut. We don't have a script. We're here just sharing our heart and soul. You can't script that. You can't script yeah. heart, you know? Yeah, you want it You want it to be raw and real. We, we don't want us to be some watered down version, totally scripted. So, because um, you know, this is where genius happens. You know, mm -hmm. maybe there'll be a great idea that comes out that'll hit you. Um, or that'll make you start thinking about what you could do for a business. Um, but I want to, before we hit and start throwing out things, okay. I want to just say like, there's like a guideline on starting a business that I, that like, what oh, type of business are you, are you trying to pimp out my workbook, the $99 workbook that's taking the country by storm on Amazon? Were you trying to put in a plug for my workbook? <laughs> You weren't, were you? Actually, I was. You were? The, I was. Okay. Yeah, just coincidence you, you, has it. Go on ahead today's then. Today's episode, <laughs> yeah, today's episode is brought to you by Mark J. Kohler, author of, what do you call that book? Oh my gosh. You know, if you're going to plug, <laughs> you really don't know, do you? Come on. Look at, he's looking around. Like, do I have a copy of this thing right now? You don't even know. You don't have ten, ten steps. <laughs> 10 steps to start and grow your business. <laughs> Eight steps, you jerk. Eight. My gosh. You know, you know, this is, oh, some of you may be man. in a relationship where you're like, you know, you really don't know what I do, do you? And, and it hurts. <laughs> it cuts. It cuts to the heart. No. Okay. Yes, it's oh. called, everybody out there, it's eight steps to start or grow your business. I've had successful entrepreneurs go, I got some killer ideas in there. It's got 60 videos, a business plan, marketing plan, strap plan. So anyway, we've got some resources for you. Our podcast is packed with good stuff down the road. Starting a business is all happens after you come up with the idea. Today is about ideas. I mean, yeah. that's kind of what you're getting at, right? Yeah. And what I was going to say is it's, it's this shotgun approach, you know, of what we're going to talk about today, that you may narrow in on something that's, that interests you, or that is something, and this is what I was going to say is the guideline, something you're already good at. Mm. Like, look at the things you already are good at or do and think, how can I make money at that? Let's say That's you're legal. into music. That's legal. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to point that out. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, if it's not legal in your state, maybe it's time to move. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. Touche. <laughs> or country. Whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah. Um, but let's just say you're into music. Let's say you play the guitar. You know. Okay. Well, maybe guitar lessons on the side could be something you could do. Maybe playing in um, a bar or club or at a coffee shop you know, and these are things to start. We're not saying this is you do this for 50 years unless you love it. But um, so start there at the things that you love and already are good at that you've already developed a skill or a talent for because that is valuable. OK, that now you've got to leverage that value. I love it. I love it. Now, yes, I'd like a few caveats here. I'm going to I want to write these down. OK, caveat right now. Obviously, did you caviars. Did, you say did I say caviars? caviars? I'm a little hungry for lunch, you know. I'm going to just chow down on some caviar for lunch. I'm just going to catch everything now because I got 10, not 8. I mean, could you add two more steps in for me? In your next well, you're trying to make me look worse when you're the one that didn't know 8 or 10. I don't know where you're going with this. You're, you're the one digging out of a hole. You should be complimenting me. I, I, should, I should probably stop talking about it. Let's just forget about it. <laughs> okay. So, number one, obviously, you want to do something you love and that you're passionate about. And maybe you're not good at it, but you can get good at it practicing on people and jacking up their homes um <laughs> you may have always wanted to wallpaper you're no good at it but you can practice yeah on, on your mother-in-law's you know house and see how it goes you know i'll just i'll give can i just start with an idea okay no hold yeah. it we, we got a, a couple more caveats first partnering okay. is i a, have a business idea i would do okay i've got a i, I got a reveal too my daughter last night allison okay. shared her new business okay. idea i haven't even told matt yet and i'm really excited about it. okay but let's just get these caveats out there something you love and are passionate about it do you know 50 percent of americans in the department of labor survey this last spring they do it every year stats show now over 50 percent of people in their daily main full occupation dislike or hate it you're spending yeah. 40 hours a week or more doing something you hate. So if you're going to start a side hustle, let's at least do something you love or passionate about or somewhat good at. I'd say caveat number two, partnering's okay. You may have a piece of the equation that is really, like you may be great at uh, writing music, but you're terrible at playing it. So just sticking with Matt's guitar theory for a minute. Now, making making money in the music industry is very difficult, well, but probably a bad idea at the first point. But there are ways to make money in music that are simple, fast, and easy without becoming a rock star. And so, but my point is you can partner with others. Partnering is okay. And sometimes you can leverage your own skill set with someone else that complements it. And that's good. Any other caveats out of the gate? Yeah, I want to say one last thing. I've always loved this Venn diagram about figuring out what to do in your life. And it applies for a business. Venn. And you got, you want to, Venn? Go ahead. Venn. Then what'd you say? Then, you, what, what diagram? Then diagram? I don't know. What'd you call it? What diagram? <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> There's three things. There's three things. Just trying to keep up here. Is it like a VIN number on a car? I thought you said Venn? a VIN diagram. I'm like, what's a VIN diagram? I, I, I just was asking. That's all. Just trying to. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you have a diagram. What's okay. this diagram? It, three things. Okay. okay. We want three things in there. All right. To, to match up. Something you love or like to do. Okay. Something you're good at. Okay. Ooh. And that's something that makes money. Mm. If you do not, if you find those three things to collide, you've just found happiness. Ooh. You'll never work a day in your life, as they say. You know what I mean? Because oh. like, oh. Okay. there you go. All right. Those three, those three things. Because there's things out there that you're good at, but no one's going to pay you money for it. Yep. There's things that that you're good at that you don't like doing that you're going to hate. You might as well stay in your job. You know what I mean? So if you can get those three things to align, Boom. and then two Loving out of three. It pretty good oh man Anyways. and i know some right. i know some of you want to get to this list but oh, i'm gonna say one of the thing i got to is i hate this statistic that you hear all the time of 50 percent businesses fail in the first three years or blah, 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 blah. no a good business owner never fails they pivot and they're flexible i want all of you listening today if this is a new thing for you you're going to do a side hustle i want you to know that you i want you to be committed to this the rest of your life for the foreseeable future. And a lot of people start businesses in their retirement to be making extra money doing something they finally love. So this could be for the rest of your life doing something you love that you're good at that makes money. I love that little diagram, whatever, Ben 
diagram that may be. But I I love the point that it's a Vin Diesel diagram. You know Vin Diesel. I love Vin Diesel. It's a okay. Vin Diesel diagram. Right. Yeah. Fast and the Furious nineteen probably. Okay. Now here's the thing. You're going to be flexible. Your idea may change. You're going to stay dedicated. You're going to modify. You're going to learn. Changing your idea six months from now because it makes more sense in a different methodology or a different type of service, a different doesn't mean you failed. It's all yeah. about modifying and growing and staying committed to the concept I, of entrepreneurship. You okay with yeah, that? Yeah, can I tell you the biggest pivot of all? Yeah. Instagram. Instagram, what we everyone probably listening uses that. It was designed to be a location sharing app. They created to like be like, hey, I'm here. I'm at XYZ restaurant. And they and it never really caught on. There's a few, there's a hmm. small niche group of people who liked it. And then they they added the ability to upload a picture of where you're at. So you could take a picture of, hey, I'm at XYZ bar or XYZ, you know, restaurant, or I'm at the pier, and you could add a picture. And that caught on like wildfire. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're not a location company, we're a photo sharing company. Mm -hmm. And so like that's like and that would have failed if they did not pivot who loses a location sharing yeah. thing anymore you know i mean that app wouldn't have been successful the phones do it now anyways just yeah. on as a part of anyway so okay, okay. so that's a great, great I love huge it. example okay now last last right. thing i promise i promise then you can start with your first <laughs> you get to choose the first category right, i'm ready and first your one. ideas okay. okay here's the next point everybody before covid there was close to 40 million um, well, they, they say working Americans, one in three, had a side hustle, a side gig, driving Uber, think of that, or selling something online, or a little handyman business on the side. We're going to go through tons of ideas here. That was before COVID. Since COVID, there's estimates of over 20 million more people starting side businesses to make ends meet. They can't rely on their day job. They're now working from home and realize, you know what? I can do some more stuff from home to make money. I'm they're it, they're discovering all the ways to make money on the web. They're they're learning about Zoom and the power of being in their home and a home based business. This is a good thing, people. Why not create another stream of income to pay off debt and build wealth? I don't want you to buy a bigger, nicer home. I don't want you to have a cooler car. I don't want you to take more trips. I would just be grateful. If you took the side hustle, paid off any crappy debt you might have, and then push the rest into an IRA, a Roth, a self-directed 401k, some strategy where you're building tax-free income for the future. That's where a side hustle freaking goes on warp drive. So everybody, if you're listening today, you're in the right spot. You're headed in the right direction. Having a side hustle is the freaking American dream. It's a great way to make money, build wealth, get out of debt, and just love life. We should end right there. That was it. That, that, yeah. that was hot. Can we just cut that? Yeah. That was cut. Geez. Cut. All right. Okay. You, first idea. I'm going to start taking notes. All right. Let's okay. Let's start in the connect of I'll take uh, Alex. I'll take products for 100. Okay. <laughs> products for 100. <laughs> We're going to start in products. I'm All interested right. in you. I'm interested you went with products because I told you before the show, I think is this could be the hardest area to make money yeah. with very low capital. Under $5,000, yeah. under $1,000. Give me your ideas, Matt product i'm, I'm going to give you one i'm going to give you one my daughter did okay my daughter's brooke and claire my oldest too mostly my older daughter brooke um did hats she sold hats and beanies she would buy them in bulk online she started with less than a thousand bucks she'd buy them in bulk online these are like trucker hats and then beanies and then she'd buy unique patches on ebay and you know she could get the hats for a few, two to three bucks a piece um, then she buy patches that are maybe sometimes they're 50 cents, sometimes they're a dollar, sometimes a really popular one was two bucks. And she would iron on the patches onto the hat, sell the hats for 20 bucks. She always made about 15 bucks a hat. And she sold them on her social media, um, sold them on my uh, family social media. She created her own social page on Instagram in particular, um, set up an Etsy store for it to sell the hats. She went into local boutiques that um that would sell local product and like a hat is just an easy accessory item that that people don't make very cool unique stuff and so that was it, it was called divine dough goods she sold uh i think about 30 was it 25 30 000 hat, hats over her time doing it crazy okay. or no no sorry about thirty thousand of revenue from selling the hats this is in high school like, oh. 
16 years old. Okay. Now, what I like that Matt just did is he gave us an idea and then expanded it for us. Now, the rest of the show, we're not going to be able to expand each business idea. And Matt and I planned on that. We wanted to kind of develop how would you approach any business. And then, then we're going to start rattling off ideas and hopefully get your juices flowing. Okay, maybe stop and joke about one or two or have fun. But now I want to give another product idea. And then I want to talk about integrated profit centers. This is a word I came up with. This is all me, Mark Kohler. Okay, now here's the point. Brooke did trucker hats. Now let's say you've got a little craft idea. Um, I had a couple girls in a college class I was teaching their sisters and they were making some really, co really cool bracelets and they were showing them to me going, we're going to start a business selling these bracelets and they could produce a bracelet for five to $10, yada, yada, yada. And I said, where are you going to sell them? And they said, well, we're going to go down to the local farmer's market and we've got a little display that we picked up at the local thrift store and we're going to lay out our bracelets and sell them for 20 bucks a piece. And all of our friends want them. They like them. And I go, okay, cool. And then I said, let's blow it up. Here's some integrated profit centers. That's great. You're going down to the farmer's market. You may go into some boutiques like Brooke did. But could we not set up a website very quickly and affordably with a WordPress theme, the great time for you to get on YouTube and learn how to build your own freaking website. You could have your own website up with a theme and a GoDaddy registration for under 100 bucks. Yeah, you've got to learn some things, but there's some great mm -hmm. platforms that will set up a website for you that are really plug and play. Yeah. So you should be, they should be yeah. selling those bracelets online. Square would be one for great small business owners because yep. they'll come with a little merchant account. You can get orders online, easy to, to set up on your own website. Okay, now, now notice where I'm going. I love it. This is where we're going is think of all the integrated profit centers with one idea. So they're going to make bracelets, sell them locally. Number two, they're going to sell them on their website. Number three, that means you're going online. You better be selling them on uh, Etsy. So you're getting Etsy huge for that kind of craft stuff. Next, mm -hmm. could you be teaching craft classes? If everybody's loving these, Set up a little craft class at a local rec center or out of your home where you could be charging and parents love their kids to go to classes and get them out of the house learning things. So you could be teaching a craft class on how to make homemade jewelry for kids, for teenagers. Sign up. I swear you could fill it with 20 kids under age 12 in a heartbeat. Next, are you making YouTube videos on how you made these? Because... Guess what? I bet you if I just YouTube how to make a bracelet, there's going to be a thousand videos, but that video becomes a platform for your website and for Etsy. And you may even get some ad rev down the road once you get your threshold of so many subscribers. Next, you should be selling product for people that want to make their own bracelets. That brings up affiliate marketing. So on your website and on your Etsy site and on your social media sites and on your YouTube site, you're going to tell people, if you want to buy your own products and do this, go here to my website. I've got all the products, the best places to get them at the best prices. You can sign up to be an Amazon affiliate right down at the bottom of the website, Walmart, Target, all these affiliate sites want you to do this. And they'll give you a 5 to 10 to 20% commission on anything anybody dies, buys while they're on Amazon. And that affiliate marketing means you don't even have to carry inventory. So these two girls, I said, we could probably come up with three or four more. But look at one, two, three, four, five, six. Six ways to make money with one idea. And then that's integrated profit centers. So now you're making money while you're sleeping. You've got all these great ideas. And they feed on each other. So every idea we demonstrate today and we talk about, you got to be thinking, what are the nine different ways I could make money doing this and integrate them together? And then it snowballs. That's absolutely critical in the process. How do you like that? Yeah. I love that, man. How many, that was great. Love that. I've that never was like, that was like running around all the bases right there and getting into home. Boom. Okay. Let's stick with okay. products. I like craft ideas. You said hats. What other products could we do? They're cheap and affordable. Corey, throw out any ideas too. We got our producer in here. Okay. We've got, <laughs> um, I think, I think one thing on products and this is, this is a crossover with some services is reselling of goods. Yes. So I was going to go. So there. one thing I love is, um, and people do this quite a bit and have on a large or small level, whether it's clothing, it could be clothing. It could be furniture. Um, I mean, there is a clothing store in Fashion Square Mall here in Scottsdale, like next to designer places, not cheap rent. All it does is it, it sells resell clothing. Yep. 
Yep. You know, and the new generation, you know, the current millennials, uh, <laughs> the new generation, uh, whatever you want to call them, they like buying resale product. They feel good about it. I mean, it's not just their generation, but um, okay, that's a that's a great way. I think just getting low cost product. You can okay, resell. if we're gonna get out fifty or more, we're gonna go back and forth with an idea. We've now developed right. how cool what you could do with an idea. Now we just need to rattle them off. So you said reselling product. My daughter Allison would go to thrift stores, buy and resell. I'm gonna stick with that one. Wedding dresses. Vintage wedding dresses are hot right now. Mm. She would go find used wedding dresses and resell them on a, uh, Etsy. She was marking them up sometimes a thousand percent. She'd buy one for a hundred bucks and sell it for, gosh, ten times. She'd sell it for a thousand dollars. I guess not a thousand percent. Okay, next. Yeah. What do you got? Reselling. Okay. Reselling gym equipment. I was selling mm. some gym equipment that I had. I just posted an ad online. Guy calls up. He owns a, st a company. That's all he does. He comes. He just buys people's gym equipment they're trying to get rid of for you know, a 10th of what it costs, then he resells it. Um, and when he was also there, he said, or cause I was moving. He's like, do you have furniture? I, he does the same thing with furniture. Wow. And see, it doesn't cost him anything to take someone and consign it. I'm going to put yeah, consignment. Like, I'm like, dude, I'll take 50 bucks for it. I just don't want to have to move it <laughs> or take it to yeah. donate it somewhere. He's going to sell it for 400 bucks, you know? Okay. Next soap oils home care products that are easy to make. A lot of people have a little idea. Now we could, we're not going to go to food yet, but anything that people can yeah. just uh, candles, potions and lotions, potions and lotions, candles, lots of fun. And these are great around the holidays, almost every holiday. If you're doing products, you need to be having, be thinking holiday sales six months in advance. What can I do product wise to load up and do that? And these again can be very, very affordable because your your initial sales are going to fund your next purchase of raw product. And then you'll well, that's a whole other topic of how you do this, but we're just coming up with ideas. Anything else in product? Okay, I got one. I think we're good. We no, no, no. Okay. What Corey says collectibles. Okay. Scary part there mm -hmm. is you got to have the money to buy the collectible in the first price and resell. Right now, what a lot of people are doing is they're going to like well, you you kind of like a garage sale or yard sale to find some treasures. I'm going to repeat this. Say it fast. No one can hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Corey's saying even buying retail and selling when they're out of stock, like Pokemon cards. I remember Corey went and bought an Xbox the day that came out and then resold that. He got an Xbox for 400, sold it for $800 the next day. So I think as you're watching retail, um, and buy and resell, I have clients that do it with concert tickets. They'll buy a concert ticket, turn around and resell it on StubHub. That's, they, they make a living doing that. Last one I need, I think in the product arena we need to talk about are MLMs. Now, MLMs are what is called multi-level marketing. And there's a thousand of them out there. They give, you know, Mona V, uh, uh, New Skin, Amway, any of these companies that sell a product um, and you can sign up and be in a, a distributor uh, very affordably. That's not a bad thing. I'm not down on MLMs. We have to be careful that it's really a product that you're, you're sold about. And you got to realize you got to build a, a, a contact list of how to get the word out. MLMs are not a bad idea. You can get into them very affordably. Okay. So crafts, resell, gym equipment, affiliate stuff. Oh man, I love it. Anything else in products that you like? Um, nope. Let's hit, you want to hit service next? Okay. Now, I'm going to say this about products. Every time you sell a service, there's typically a product that goes with it. So I'm going to throw it on the first one on service, landscaping. Now, I know a landscaping um, trailer, you could be into that 10 or 20 grand at least with the mowers and the blowers and the weed eaters and all that. But a lot of people can start right out with no money at all using the equipment that a homeowner might have and giving them a discount on landscaping and just digging ditches and putting in sprinklers and getting a retainer up front. And when you start doing landscaping, what are you going to sell them? You're going to sell them hoses, rakes, shovels on an affiliate site that you create with the best prices around. So you just tell your homeowner, you need a new sprinkler. Here's where you go. Corey, you were going to say on landscaping? Uh oh, yeah, something kind of related to someone's house, but Christmas lights. Christmas lights, big one. Christmas lights, big one. Uh, all the holiday lighting. Okay, map services in, we're doing home area services. Oh, home area services. Okay. Well, I chose all landscaping. Right. So I think we're going to go down that lane for a minute. Yeah, stay in home. Okay. All right. Um, well, just right now I'm buying a house that needs a remodel 
And I can't tell you how expensive contractors are right now. If you want to know where's the most profitable place with the lowest amount of training or credentials that has that your services could be highly valuable, it's in the trades. It's do you have a trade or can you go develop one or learn from someone to do things from just laying tile? You know, I mean, I'm not talking about how you have to come be a master electrician, but can you lay tile? Can you do demo? Can you frame? Mm -hmm. Can you hang, put install lighting? All those types of things that um, are happening right now as people are staying in their homes, remodeling, there's low inventory. It's a great opportunity. And, and the fees are that they're getting charged as I'm on the other end as a consumer right yeah. now is I'm like, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm going to rattle off a few handyman services in certain states. If you charge more than a thousand or 500 or 2000, you have to be a licensed contractor. You want to look at the rules on handyman services, but a lot of subcontractor trades, you don't need a license for You may need a little bit of insurance and you got to have a good contract when you walk into people's homes, but you could do wallpapering, painting, uh, grouting, a uh, little bit of woodworking. I love the demo and dump runs. Yeah. I had two kids in my neighborhood. They're like, can we borrow your trailer? We're going to start a dump run business. I'm like, all right, you're doing five dump runs yeah. for me for free. And they would just go, they'd put flyers up. This Saturday, we're doing dump runs. They were swamped. People were like, you'll go yeah. to the dump for me? And they'll say 20 bucks let plus me, whatever the weight is. You know. Let me give an example. There's a kid that went to high school with, with my kids. I mean, he's like 22 now. He has his HVAC subcontractor license. Mm. He worked in it a little bit in high school and then he worked it out through college. Um, he's got his own business and has a, lot, a bunch of employees. The kid's like 22 and busy as he can ever be. He's just busy, like, you know, so um, that he, and could has an opportunity to build a super profitable okay. long term business. When I was in co college, I owned a janitorial business for eight years. I started it, no lie, people, with a mop bucket, a vacuum, and a wet dry vac. That's all I had. And I, I started for under $500. I started knocking on commercial locations saying, can I clean your office twice a week or once a week? I built it up to 20 employees and I'll full disclosure. I sold the business for about $50,000 when I, after six years running it, six, seven, eight years and, um, sold it, used that money to go on to law school. And so again, you can have a day job. You can be going to college. These are side businesses to see how they go and they may supersede your day job. They may not. Um, but janitorial construction okay. cleanup. I have two ladies who are doing construction yeah. cleanup and love it. Window cleaning. Okay. All right. You want to get out of home or you want to stay in the home? Anything else on home? Window cleaning, janitorial construction let's, cleanup. Janitorial. Let's get out of the house. Okay. Go let's ahead. Get out of the house. You want to stay in service? Right. How about we do it? Let's do a the stay in services. Okay. Um, let's do a in services teaching for five hundred. Teaching. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> teaching. Okay. Think of the things you could teach fitness, maybe, you know, personal training, um, yoga, music, yoga, um, coaching. Oh yeah. Life coaching uh, huge right now. And I, we could even put that in the professional category, but there could be a lot of things you could be doing, um, in the personal development arena, whether with soul, yeah. spirit, body, mind, all that. Okay. So, but I love the teaching because that is the one thing where you can just think of what do I already know? What am I good at? And as Mark talked about earlier with the bracelet example, this is also something where you can do one-on-one -on -one teaching. You can do virtual. My daughter takes music mm -hmm. lessons virtually. You know, yeah. you can have an, an audience of people from virtual. You can do group lessons. There's a lot of people who do group lessons that are all online. Mm -hmm. um, you can do this from your house. You don't need a storefront or a location, you know. You don't need the local kids to just come to your house, but you can also record stuff and create content and sell the a video about how to learn to play guitar, you know? Um, so you just stay in that lane and just keep developing a product and service, build your brand, your reputation, get good at it. And, and then you're going to have some more valuable content to sell, whether it's one-on-one -on -one, group or package product. I love it, Matt. And here's where the integrated profit centers come together because on that bracelet idea, I didn't even get, like I said, there was like nine ideas. One of them was doing virtual training, virtual classes. Now, some of you may like, how do I do that? How do I schedule it? How do I take people's money? This is where these websites 
and especially these platforms like Squarespace, they're so helpful getting you a website that has a plug-in calendar where people can book time with you and a plug-in payment app where they can turn around and just pay you right there on Venmo. So they schedule you, they pay you, pops up on your calendar for the day. It's already done. You just know who you're going to call. You're going to get on Zoom. You're going to get on whatever, uh, live YouTube and teach someone and get paid. Then you're going to sell product. And then you're, so, so they're all integrated. Once you're teaching something, you better be selling something with it. Yeah. I've got uh, one more in the teaching. Okay. Unless you got something. Nope. I'm going to go. So tutoring. Okay. Yes. Tutoring for kids, like in high school. Again, I'm just mm -hmm. like, on the consumer side of this. College kids, they typically get these tutoring companies. They're, they're online and you can be a tutor. Yep. Um, what, what were you good at? Are you good at math? Can you tutor algebra one and two? Can you tutor calculus? Oh. You know, maybe you're into sciences, like maybe you're into writing and, you know, so pick the subjects you're good at and like and, and tutor in those for junior high and high school kids. And let's put this in perspective too. Some of you, and I talk to college students about this all the time. If you're working at the low, you know, the college cafeteria or in the janitorial department making $10 an hour, you can start tutoring at least $20 an hour. How many, I paid more than $20 an hour for a kid, for college students to oh, come yeah. teach my kids. If you're not on some of these things, whether it's music, the better you get, um, in tutoring, you should be charging twenty, twenty-five, thirty dollars an hour, and uh, and they can buy in blocks. This is techniques. You can say, "Well, I'm thirty dollars an hour," exactly. but if you buy ten hours, it's twenty bucks an hour, and they pre-buy it, and then you're off to the races. Um, yep, love it. And also, some of these businesses are ones that are very scalable, like the tutoring, for example. That's very scalable. You get good at tutoring, you get a good system down, you learn how to tutor the right subjects, you get other people to tutor that you pay you know, and, and have obviously, you know, some profit on top of you're building a brand, building the business, building the systems, making it scalable. It could be a, a long-term type business that you stay in that converts, like we said, from the side hustle. I love it. Now, I think the, the teaching slides into the music because it is so many people think, well, you can't make money in the music and the arts. You can if you're creative. And here's why. Yeah. In the music realm, most of the clients that I know that are musicians and they want to have that a huge part of their life, music bakery you should be recording riffs recording your music that you create and you can be selling it online through all these different websites where people like need a jingle for their podcast need a jingle for their website they need this and you can go sell your specialty music that you create in 15 second clips 30 second clips so check out music bakery and um the Can I just say this music. on music? Just, you know, because this is like one of my, the, the favorite side hustles that I mean, I went to a breakfast restaurant on Sunday. Okay. There's a guy out front because they always have a wait at this place. It's a great local place. They always have a wait. He just sits out there and plays his guitar. He sets up a little mic. Um, the guy probably makes at least 50 bucks an hour in tips. The whole time I was sitting there, the, the amount of people that dropped a few bucks in, five bucks in while he was there was insane. Um, and the restaurant and probably paid him a it. cover. The, loving it. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. He might have got a little kick from them to be yeah. there. Yeah. No, I so. love it. And 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 it, and so, okay, now before we go to professional, because I think it slides right into professional, which some of those fall into the professional service, you know. Um, but before we go there, my daughter, I wanted to throw this out. Allison last night. She goes, Yeah. Now she works for me right now. She's trying to massage me because she's going to be quitting. She's like kind of prepping me <laughs> for that sad day when she quits because I love seeing my kids at the office. But she goes, I'm going to start doing alterations. Now, my daughter is much like Brooke. She loves to sew. She likes to create. She's a fashion merchandising student. She's the one that was buying and reselling wedding dresses and clothing. And what she found was when she was buying and reselling jeans and clothes that were unique at thrift stores and then on her Etsy site, they always needed to get a little cleaning. There was a little sewing involved. She had to tighten it up a little bit or fix this or this, that, or another. And so and she's been going to college for fashion merchandising, which she learns how to drape. Now, some of you ladies know what that means. I don't know. You, I guess you put a dress on someone and you fit it and drape it or whatever. But she's like, you, she's like, you try to go get some alterations right now. Where do you even go? And how much do they charge? And she's like, they've got their new little rental property they're in. And she goes, I'm putting a sign on the door, alterations three days a week from this time to this time, stop in. And she's going to be charging 30 to $40 an hour for alterations. And it's in her lane. See, she's going to be buying yeah. and selling clothes. She's the, alterations makes her better 
at these other profit yeah. centers. So I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, I love it. I love that. It's funny. You got the example. I love that. Um, and I've seen some of the stuff Ali's made, which is super cool. I've, um, uh, like my thing I, what I said at the beginning of the, what I would want to do, like if I like hated being a lawyer or got sick of IRAs, which I'm not, I love it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought like being a tailor would be cool. Mm. Like, like being a tailor. I love like a well tailored suit or a nicely tailored shirt fits super important to me on like clothing and, and and I just, I've always wanted to like tinker with my own stuff. And I've seriously, this is on like my bucket list of things. You told me this, this is true. Class. Yeah, I want to take a tailoring class and like print to someone or just, I don't know, there's probably a place you can learn this just to do it for my own crap and get my own little tools and machine, sewing machine and just do it. Um, but you could make a business out of that. Like I, even when I go to Nordstrom, you know, and it's like, how much is it to, to tailor 75 bucks? It's like geez. three weeks later. Um, yeah, yeah, three weeks later, and you know, the, I love Nordstrom, but the tailoring's gone down there. You yeah. know, yeah. and and I've gone since to just another local business that's down the street from my house that just does um, tailoring for my clothing. So, um, great little service business. Okay, let's um, jump to professional, Corey. I'm going to be getting to yeah. online. Whenever you have, I know Corey's over there waving his hand from time to time, having ideas. When you have ideas, just rattle off three or four. Just be ready to go. Boom, boom, boom. Online. Now, Corey is our YouTube freaking genius, and there's a lot of money to make on YouTube. Every 15-year-old in the country wants to be a YouTuber, and they think it's easy to get a million followers. That's a whole other story. But there are money, the ways to make money there. We'll come to it in a moment. Professional. Big one. Bookkeeping. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, yeah. Holy crap. Bookkeeping. People need that. I'm going to throw in that, you know, life coaching, the... A uh, personal virtual assistant. Um, you mm -hmm. can, you don't need anything. Just start helping yeah. someone schedule and do things for them. Um, How about social media marketing management, managing mm -hmm. people or brands, social media? If maybe you're into that and have some skills on it. Yep. Fitness Zoom classes. So you're doing back to the um, Zoom on, Zoom on Zoom. Sales training, computer training. See, so you're like people all the time, older people are like trying to figure out their computer online. And what do you, what do I do? I have an IT guy. A lot of people don't. You used to go to Geek Squad, right? You'd go to Geek Squad over at Staples or Home Office Depot. Best Buy. Whatever. Best Buy is a Best Buy, whatever. <laughs> um, but that's tough. Web designing. Um, bookkeeping virtual assistant, marketing consultant, which falls into the social media, just help people manage their YouTube. Uh, yeah. Okay, anything on professional like, here's services? Like, here's the, but if you're like in a job, let's say, let's say you're an accountant, you know, and you work in an accounting function, maybe you do bookkeeping on the side for private customers. Um, maybe taxes, individuals taxes, if you, you know, that's your, your field and you wanna do something a little bit on the side. Um, Maybe you're in the marketing department of a company and you want to do some marketing consulting and work on the side too and build up, you know, so I'm not just talking about someone that, you know, is 20 that has that really needs a lane. I'm just thinking you could be a very experienced, very knowledgeable person in your space that would have no, not a hard time getting some customers on the side if you want to branch out to that way. And that is the gateway to starting a full-term marketing business yeah. or accounting and tax practice or whatever it may be. Yeah. I was in my Dallas workshop three weeks ago and this woman raised her hand because everybody that raised their hand at a question at my workshop, I asked them, what's your side hustle? They have to say. And she said, well, I'm a shipping coordinator. And I'm like, what? She goes, in my day job, I learned how to get ship things that FedEx and UPS won't take. So if you want to ship a mm -hmm. piano or you want to ship something big, where do you go? And everybody tries to go to the web and figure it out. You just call me. I line the whole thing up. She goes, I can do international. I can ship a pallet of things. I can ship this. Companies will come wrap it up, put it on a semi and take it across the country. And there's a lot of big equipment type people that are either manufacturer or reselling that need that. Next, um, I would say also freelance writing, copy editing, proofreading. And if you need ideas on this, I'm going to give yeah. you one of the best places to market your wares. Elance elance.com mm. uh oh did they change their name no what is it now it's not elance or is or what was the one i used before that went from elance upwork 
Elance um, was bought out by Upwork. So you oh, go to upwork.com. Yeah. Elance.com takes you to upwork.com. But this is the freelance website, and you can see all the different, it says find work. And you just click on it and see all the services that you can find around the world that you could provide to others. Sales, marketing, design, I, digital design. Yeah. If you like like proofreading or editing, maybe you are an English major or you got a master's in it or something, or even a PhD. Um, when I did my book, the self-directed IRA handbook, I paid an editor through Amazon that would hire people that had either a master's or PhD in English or creative writing. That's some skills and experience that, that would then proofread and edit your book. How cool is that? Yeah. I mean, that, that was cool. And this person probably just did it from the comfort of their home. You know, I'm sure they love the book too. I love it. I'm yeah, just going to read win -win for them. I freaking love it. And this is right off Elance. Here's eight different categories that you could do. Uh, content writing, translation, translators. And I, I know a lot of kids that are, you know, we're here in a little community that has uh, LDS or Mormon kids at this college here locally that go to go on missions around the world and learn some weird language other than just the basics Swahili or whatever and they come back and they never use it again but if you go to Elance and say I can translate for courts for um, different government services editors ghost writers copywriters see there's content writers and copywriters they're two different things proofreaders uh, creative writing and grant writing writing for grants uh, it could be really uh, fantastic okay uh, there, the list goes on and on, but I get over to Upwork and see what they have, um, in this area. They have graphic designers, art directors, web designers, voice artists. Matt and I had to hire someone to do the intro for our podcast. Um, yeah. so animators, motion designers. All right. So that's professional. We could keep going on and on. Let's jump from service. You choose. Where do you want to go? Let's hit, let's go over to food. Oh, good one. I mean, it's almost lunchtime here. I'm kind of thinking okay. my mind's on food as it is. Right. Can I tell you the one? Um, I, you go first, and then I'll tell you the one I love. Let's see if you hit the one I love. Okay. All right. The, the one I love is um, like the meal kit or, you know, making food in bulk that you then sell to other people in a kind of a delivery business. I've seen a lot of these. There's a lot of them here in Arizona locally. But some of them are, you know, they don't, they're not a huge business. It's really just someone doing it out of their house and delivering you food for the week in bulk that you can then you know use for lunch, whether it's like they'll do the rice and the meat and the vegetables and it's um, fresh, pre-made and easy for you to, to just kind of warm up. So okay. food, make and delivery. I don't know. I love it, cool. Story. I'm gonna say grocery shopping. A lot of people say, can you just do my grocery shopping? Here's what I want. And when you go online to buy stuff online at Albertsons and if they don't have it, they always replace it and it sucks. And you're like, I didn't want that. Well, we do the next best thing. So, but if you have a grocery buyer for you, you can tailor make some of that. My favorite one, catering. Oh, mm -hmm. catering is a huge business. You try to hire a caterer a week out from now, good luck. I mean, <laughs> caterers are booked out two to three weeks in advance. And some caterers say, you tell me the food you want. And then they go to restaurants and line it up, but then they bring it, set it up and provide utensils and all the goodies. So you can say, I need a caterer, but you could be an all-in-one caterer, and I'm supported by eight different restaurants. I've seen a lot of that. And you're yeah, not out of pocket. Like you're not out of pocket. Yeah, you're the middleman. Yeah. Yeah. Personal like chef. That. Go down your path, Matt. Say, I don't want you to bring mm -hmm. me food. I want you to make me dinner two or three times a week, and I want healthy food. What would the cost be? And I had a, a Molly, my daughter, when she was going finishing her last year of high school, she was um, an assistant to a chef the taught cooking classes, another one, cooking mm -hmm. classes. And then what he would do, you could book him for Thanksgiving dinner. He did four things. He goes, I can handle four. And he goes, I will make all the trimmings for your Thanksgiving dinner and deliver it on Thanksgiving morning. He goes, I'm doing four families this year. And he was charging yeah. like 500 bucks, but it was all done. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, ones I like that have been relatively low cost, you probably do under 10,000 is these like, uh, maybe a little more, but, um, these drive up drink places, you know, mm. that whether it's like flavored sodas, um, used to be like the snow cone place in the summer, but, um, but it, they, it's expanded now to be, um, coffee or teas, um, some simple baked goods that come in those, those are pretty low cost, but high profit margin. They'll sell like a drink for like four or five bucks. 
that you know it's costing them 50 cents if that to to do so um and the drive up has been super popular so you see him i don't know we have them here in arizona or back in utah before i came here these just little shacks that are trying to drive up in certain you know anchor tenant type places you can just drive up grab a drink and go yeah I, and i'm gonna say this and not that matt's idea was a bad one but i want to caution people too that you got to look around you need to find a niche in the food industry because I told some kids came by that were in the local area and they said, we're going to start a, a little restaurant. I'm like, please, we do not need mm -hmm. another one of those restaurants. I won't say what it was. And, and I'm like, there's six mm -hmm. soda shops within four miles. Please do not yeah. do a soda shop. Just find something that's unique. I go, why don't you deliver made to order vegan food for those that are vegan or those that are glute, uh, gluten free? No one's doing that. Find something no one else yeah. is doing for crying out loud. Um, yeah, I'll I'll just can you know defend myself for a little bit on that. Sure, you want to find a need that's not being met, but you also want to do something that's been proven to be successful. Because on the other hand, I hear people come up with dumb ideas. I'm like, no one's going to pay you for that. Mm, fair. Like, who else is you know? They're yeah, but no one's doing it. No one's thought of this yet. No, maybe there's a reason. A lot of people have thought of that. <laughs> Some people have tried it. They didn't last very long. That's why. Oh, this is where I was going to go next. And Matt, that's a great transition to this point. A lot of times in the food industry, I've seen clients that are like, well, I've got a special hot sauce or I've got a special recipe and I want to bottle it and sell it. Barbecue sauce, something, a drink, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's phase three. Getting a product approved and with all the different issues you need to go through to be able to ship a product and have the right preservatives and all that, very, very difficult. But what I say is start local, start doing the classes, yeah. start doing the local delivery, start selling it at the local uh, uh, market and do, just do some local things, build up a following, get your website set up, do it made to order, made to ship. Next. Yeah. If you yeah. think of, I mean, just let me say on this and just on the food, every major restaurant chain Every major food brand yes. that you bought from was a one store place at first. Yeah. <laughs> if that it was a kitchen, it could have been out of their house. Yeah. You know, in their kitchen at home. Okay. This, every one of them started like that. Every one. I love it. Um, so don't, don't think that that's just where you're going to end. You might have a, you know, you might love it and I might have a tremendous amount of success. Okay. I'm going to go back. I'm going to jump if I may out of food and use it as a jumping point with catering from catering, even local small weddings and little get togethers parties is, um, floral design and okay. gardening <laughs> what are floral design. because I don't, Corey does wedding photography. Uh, we didn't even yeah. get into wedding videos, videography, yeah. filming. Uh, Corey's like, it's tough. It's a tough world. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch Bride Wars before you go jump in that. But floral design, gardening consultant, furniture repairs. I just got, I've just got a, a list here that I was playing with and I forgot to throw it out. Image consulting, okay. Matt, I'm just going to well, throw this out. I can um, use one of those. Was that, yeah. was that a hint for me? I need to hire one of those. A little bit. Im <laughs> we'll go with image consulting and fitted clothing. Mm -hmm. Just. Side note. <laughs> the okay. one. Okay, let's go to pets. What do you got in pets? Okay. Well, I mean, where do you the start? dog walker? <laughs> yep, the dog walker. Huge. Okay. Huge. Uh, huge growth in pets, and I think right now this is a big opportunity in pets for for a couple of just demographic reasons. One, people bought more pets ever during the pandemic. Yep. Two, they're now going back to work those pets are going to be a little lonely and a lot of pet parents are feeling a little guilty about it. Yeah. Play on so guilt. I've talked to friends about this. Yeah. I like the guilt play. Yeah. <laughs> You'll pay big money. Well, that's what they're going to, they want someone to come walk their dog, you know, yeah. they need, they want yeah. that for their dog and, and they'll pay for that. That's a, something that they really value and that yeah. you can take a number of dogs, of course, at once. Yep, Corey's throwing it, and I know the app. I just forgot it. There's several apps out there to get dog sitting or pet sitting. Yeah, pet there's care.com. Pet... That would be one. You could also do like house cleaning if you want to clean houses there or like nanny or babysitting services. Of course, those are care.com. Yep, the I love care it. App. Dog, Airbnb. dog Airbnb, what's that? So you pick up my dog and air so take it for a while? Airbnb for when people go out of town oh, okay. Okay. All right. I love it. They got a house. You want to throw a bunch of dogs in it 
and Airbnb. Okay, I got an idea. It was 160 a night to have their dog Airbnb at their, this other person's house. Okay, I'm going to bring together two cool ideas. If you want a house sit for dogs, why have them come into your house and destroy it? I would go get an Airbnb for a weekend and then book like <laughs> 10, 10 dogs you're going to sit for and bring them to the Airbnb you're renting and then yeah. walk away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll never get be able to rent another Airbnb again. Yeah. And I got a good one on this. <laughs> your rating will be zero stars. Yeah. Get a van and then carpet it to look like a dog. And then mm. you could drive the dogs to certain events and deliver yeah. dogs to people. I, I, the shack and wagon. There's, yeah, yeah. I, just a crazy idea. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out. Yeah. If things got bad, yeah. you could sell the van, get a motorcycle. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Whatever it takes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say pet photography. Uh, all the products that go with pet, pet clothing, pet gadgets, pet things mm -hmm. that you can make and sell on Etsy. So this is the crossover yeah. with the products and online is that you're providing a service and then you're also selling a product. How cool would it be if someone watched my dog and said, oh, you need to buy this for your dog. Well, I don't know where to go. Yeah. Just go to my website. I got it all. Affiliate fee. You're making money at night. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, on the pets thing, um, like the personalized dog collars mm. or a cat, even from a cat I've had is the, you know, it's just a collar, but it will have their name on it. So it gets a little personalized yeah. and those are very popular on like Etsy and, and websites to make. And, and I'm full disclosure here. Um, Matt and I, after a long day's work, we're a little, we're a little beat up. We're a little lonely, a little sad. And you know, we, we need a little bit of love. So I have a little dog named Winnie. When he follows me around, mm -hmm. she sleeps on the corner of my bed with me. Matt's, mm -hmm. you, Matt's got a cat. Very. What's your? Go ahead. I'm telling you your cat name and your your cat. My cat's name is Duffy. 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 It's from my daughter. I got my daughter the cat. So. Someone inherited but, it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I like her too. So yeah, yeah. She's but, grown on me. Yeah, I go to Matt's house and Duffy's sitting right there. She follows Matt around. But I think I, they say now one in three Americans have a pet. Uh, and if not more, I think after the pandemic, there's so much to do there. Okay. We need to jump over to our last category online, Woof. making money online. Now I want to explain one thing here. Yeah. Can I, Matt? Yeah. I don't think everybody understands affiliate marketing. Let me explain this. Let's say let's run off the pet and the craft. So you've, you've got a pet business. You're walking, you're sitting, you're helping pets, the pet owners, then on the weekends, you build personalized pet collars. So when you sit, when you house sit a dog, you go, hey, by the way, I made this collar. Would you like one handmade for your dog? Oh my gosh, how much is it? 25 bucks, 30 bucks. Okay, so you're selling these personalized collars online, maybe on Etsy. You're do, combining it with your clientele that your house, your dog sitting for, or dog walking for. And then you set up an affiliate link on your website. Now, let me tell you what that means. You're gonna to go to Amazon and sign up as an affiliate. And then on your website, you're gonna copy and paste all these pet products that you're a fan of, food, different things that pets need, whatever, toys. And then when you go to serve your clientele, you'll say, don't go on Amazon. It's so hard to find this. Go to my page. Here's my little business card with my website. You can buy all the things for your dog that I love on my website. And they go, oh, thanks. So I don't have to go get lost in the Amazon wormhole for you know two hours. I can go to your website. Yeah. So you go to the website. Anything, they click on it, it takes them to Amazon. Because you're signed up as an Amazon affiliate, the embedded link pays you anywhere from one to two to five to 10% uh, based on the product. And you just get it paid to you whenever, anytime any buys, anybody buys something that you created a link for on your site. But it gets better because here's what happens. Let's say they go to your site and they go, ooh, I'm gonna buy this collar. They click on it, eh, but they don't buy it. With most of these affiliate links, they keep the window open on Amazon. Anything they buy within the next 24 hours, even if it's a new red dress, you get a cut of it because you got them to go to Amazon. So Amazon rewards you not only with the product that you got the client to click on to take them to Amazon. Well, they're on for a certain period of time and they buy anything because they entered Amazon through your link. You get a piece of it. That's the power of affiliate marketing. So whatever service, product, online, grocery, pets, whatever the hell you're doing, if you have a website with products that you want your clientele to buy, you're affiliate linking them back to Amazon. More money in your pocket. 
That's yeah. online power. Yeah. When I when I think of online, I think of online as many times that that's not the business. That's the mechanism you sell your product mm. like or that's the mechanism you deliver your service. You know, like as we talked about, let's say you're into music, you know, you might let people book stuff on your website. You might deliver classes on your website. You might have recordings of learn this on, you know, on your website. And um, and you may promote a lot online through social media, through YouTube. Like when I go play, when I want to learn a new guitar on the song, I just go to YouTube and I put in guitar the, and the name of the song and it'll pull up tons of videos of different music instructors, mostly guitar and teachers who say, hey, we're going to talk about how to play this song and they show you how to play the song. But then that person teaches music as a day job. I mean, that's what they do all the time. They've got video content and stuff you can buy that's more premium about how to learn guitar and learn tricks and other skills. And so and sell guitars. Website, and, yeah. and sell stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they that's not just the website. When we say internet like it's a or an online business, it's like, well there's that that's a mechanism to deliver the product or service in many ways. It isn't the business in and of itself. I just, that's a great now, affiliate point. marketing. It's own little animal, of course, but yeah, yeah, no, no. And I think using the power of online marketing can also generate revenue in and of itself. I think the most classic is ad rev. Ad revenue is kind of the word that if I can go out and create enough followers and subscribers in these other areas, then YouTube's going to reward me. And what's the threshold, yeah. Corey? How many subscribers do you have to have to be qualified to start getting ad rev? Is it a hundred subscribers or a thousand? I think it's a thousand. Okay. So YouTube is a whole profit center in of itself. I think Pudu Pie and all these people that have millions and millions of followers. They're making money off of creating videos that people watch. And that's a business idea. A lot of people think it seems easier than it really is. It's hard to get people to subscribe and hard to get people to stay on and watch. Who would watch a video about small business? I mean, it was right there. You know, you're fighting an uphill battle. It's brutal. <laughs> um, okay. Right. Well, any other final ideas you want to throw out? Matt, Corey, I'm going to look at um, look ooh, my list here. Here's an interesting one. We didn't even think about this. Babies and children. Uh, teaching classes to children, tutoring. We kind of touched on that cloth diaper service. A lot of people are like, I want to go back to cloth and they drop the cloths off. They pick them up, they launder them and bring them back. Um, children's party services. Uh, this is your <laughs> chance, Matt, to dress up as a clown, do a little magic on the side, do a party. Mm -hmm. um, I, <laughs> I, what else could we do? Oh my gosh, there's gotta be so much for children. I shouldn't have opened that can of worms without, but my daughter, Allison, is, it makes or buys and resells children clothing. A lot of people want kind yeah. of a retro, uh, an, um, I don't wanna say antique, what do you call it? Um, when you buy clothing, it looks a little, it's not retro. She has a word for it. Anyway, but there's a lot of buy and reselling in children's clothing, children's products. All right. Um, I like the one idea you actually, we had on the show at one point, an example you had of a neighbor kid that was doing cleaning RVs. Oh, People went yeah. like their camper, or their RV when they came back from a trip and no one wants to clean it. And she learned how to clean her own family RV. And that's a, a that's an excellent service that, you know, people just need to probably do annually or biannually anyways, or after a big trip, they may it. want someone to come clean their RV. That's a little more tailored. You probably get a little more higher dollar for that than just cleaning someone's house or, or even a business. Oh, and I love it. And I love um, the RV repair, maintenance, inspection business. Little shout out to those guys down in Texas doing that. Um, Stephen Coop, we love them. But the RV industry, holy crap, we could probably bring up 20 ideas with RVs too. Yeah. renting out your RV. Now this as again, this is outside the scope of start a business under a thousand dollars, but you can, I love how you brought up cleaning RVs and more RVs were sold during the pandemic than any other year. People mm -hmm. are like, I got to get out of here. Got to go buy an RV. Wow. Um, no. Okay. Well, this is exciting. I think we covered a lot of ground. <sighs> any final words for Matt? Someone that's going to start a small business. Well, I want to go back to what I said too. I mean, don't just start a bis business because you hate what you're doing now. Like really take this time as an opportunity to like really soul search in what you want to do. Like what makes you happy? What, what are you good at? And I just learned in my own life with doing IRA stuff, you know, kind of turning into a self-directed IRA geek. 
I enjoyed my work more and I loved it more because I was good at it. And I knew that I spent the time, I had the expertise at it. Starting a new business that you have no experience in whatsoever, well, it may sound cool and it may be popular right now. Maybe it's gonna be a struggle. And maybe you need to go work for someone else in that field of work before and do that for a year or two. Like get your skills up to a level to where you're actually valuable as a business owner. Because if you're not good at it, you're not gonna stay in business. You're not gonna grow that business. You're gonna hate it. Your customers aren't gonna like it. So try to find something you that you like to do that you're good at and make sure you're ready and you've developed those skills to be valuable to provide a service that someone would wanna pay for. Okay, and I'm, we're gonna go back and forth here for a couple of minutes, I'm sure, and wrap this up, but I'm gonna counter argument to Matt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, I don't think the most important thing is being good at it. It's answering your darn phone, showing up on time <laughs> and providing mm -hmm. customer service. Like if I hired someone to do something like even just window cleaning, which I did, you know, mm -hmm. in this last couple months, um, I couldn't even get a hold of them for three weeks. Then they said they were going to come and they came and gave me a bid, but said, but we're not doing it today. I'm like, holy crap. How do you guys stay in business? They were so dysfunctional in their system. They didn't return my calls. I went with another guy that just showed up and said, I'll do it. And I said, when tomorrow? Okay, cool. I'll pay you. Now he didn't do as great as job as I wanted, but he said, let's walk around. Were you happy with this? I go, I'd really like you to do this one and this one. He's like, okay, I'll do it. I want you happy. So you may not be great at it. And, but if you have a good customer service relationship and policy, you're going to learn on the job too. Um, so I think just showing up, answering your damn phone mm -hmm. and being there is half the battle. Yeah. There, there are service like windows is a good example of that's a low skill thing anyways, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you're so much of a business, just think of the best restaurant you've been to. If the service sucks there and the food's amazing, you still hated it. Yeah. If you didn't like it. If the host took forever to get you seated, if the waiter didn't attend you in enough timely manner, you know, like you just, you just, you didn't have a good experience. And so, um, so you, I think that goes out saying you got to nail the customer service, particularly as a new business owner, cause you're gonna have to be scrappy. You're gonna have to do stuff that you're, you know, you're gonna have to be there, be responsive. Like Mark said, but. I just think to have success and to have confidence and to like what you're doing and not stress about it. Of I course. just want people to feel like, don't skip over, oh, what should I use to clean their windows? And don't just be like, I can do all the sales and marketing and be like, do you, did you buy the tools? Have you, do you even know how to do this? You know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But um, I think it's more the flashy businesses that people want to get into that they don't know anything about, but it might be trending or more flashy. And so they think, oh, cool, I, I want to do that, but but they're not ready yet. Yeah, no, I hear you. And one other one, I, on that note too, is auto detailing, mobile, all de uh, mobile auto yeah. detailing. Frankly, anything mobile. Think about where do you go across town to do? And you're like, can I yeah. provide that service in a mobile format and put flyers on people's door and just show yeah, up? Yeah, here's... It? Here's one that I knew some a guy did that um, it did mobile car detailing, did a great job, did my car. He would do private planes and he would make a great deal of money on those. He would go mm. detailing uh, uh, private planes and then got a good little referral network of other private plane owners. Uh -huh. And now that's a pretty awesome business. Yeah, cool. And I had some kids in my neighborhood. They're like, oh, I want to make some money. I go, you're going to start a garbage can cleaning business. And I said, mm. you just, all you need is a hose, a thing, a brush, some soap. You're going to show up at the people's house. If they don't have a hose, you're going to plug in your own hose, turn the garbage can upside down, scrub it, spray it out, boom. And I know there's mobile uh, uh, businesses that are built as franchises that have trucks that pick it up, clean it, drop it. Mm -hmm. But you can be a few bucks under that price and be a local kid. And this is your chance. If you're younger or even older, get that tiny Tim type um, sales approach. You're knock on someone's door. Can I clean your garbage cans, please? <laughs> <laughs> a little something for me, please. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong begging. You know, look good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. You know, well, there's just not yeah. the then there's not the local paper route much anymore. You know, yeah. I did that as a kid, and I literally went door to door and sold the local paper. You know. Oh, you were a paper boy. I never knew that. And delivered it. Yeah. Yeah. I had two paper routes. Man, you're amazing. Um, well, I oh, last point, I'm going to say this. People, don't feel like you have to go out and have the website and the LLC and the DBA mm -hmm. and the bank account and the vid. Da, 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 da. And people think there's this overwhelming threshold of knowledge that I and things I have to do before I can start my business. Yes and no. 
there are there's going to be stages where you need to get more and more legit. I get it. And this is where I'm going to say, and this is, I don't care if it's a shameless plug or not. I'm going to say it is shameful plug. My workbook, 99 bucks. I take you through all the steps. I have an hour and a half town hall meeting. All eight steps. That's right. Damn it. All eight steps. Where some people take 10, Mark Kohler does it in eight. See, you totally redeemed yourself. Just when I thought. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay I now the shagging wagon straight up <laughs> yeah shagging wagon traded for that motorcycle um you know that john denver's full of crap but i really think you know this is a chance to learn in in this little workbook all the little things that can fast track you to just do a little beta testing go out and sell this and see how it goes you may go no one's buying oh it really is a niche everybody wants it you never know but don't you don't yeah. have to come out all fresh and brand new and spend all this time and effort to go try it the first time. Just make your damn barbecue sauce and try to sell it at the next barbecue. Do people buy it? No. Then start over. You're not going to start doing <laughs> something else. You know, you're going to do flavored honey. I'm going to do clover honey and I'm going to do this honey. And, you know, blah, blah. I don't know if you like cooking, find something people are buying. Like a little chili pepper in that meth never hurts. It's your signature, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Breaking Bad, of course. Thank right? you. <laughs> Woo! Man, this is, uh, all right. Uh, well, I'm done. That went that went south there. Um, uh, okay. Well, I this was fun to do. Hopefully, you guys got some ideas from this, and maybe it spurred some. I'm sure there's much more better ideas out there on what you can do that aligns with what you like to do and are good at. And um, we'll be back, of course, next week with another amazing episode of the Main Street Business Podcast. And all of these ideas will be down in the show notes by category. And Corey is so excited to transcribe every one of these ideas into categories and write them down in the show notes for you. I Mm. I got a little ugly look over there. Yeah, thank you, Corey. But we love you and appreciate it. Think of how many people, the lives you're going to change. Corey needs an intern. Corey needs an intern. That's an intern. He's, He's a, do you have an intern? You need an intern that, you know, this is core America, core, core, core America, <laughs> core America industries. <laughs> you need to learn, just fill a big exercise ball of oil and let's go see what happens when we drop it off the second floor. Just see, he's not a Seinfeld fan. He has no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everybody. See you next week. <laughs>